Let's talk next about climate smart agriculture, which, as put in the report, is a term that agribusiness corporations devised about a decade ago. And this term is used to counter growing support from agroecology and international forums on agriculture and climate change. Yes, absolutely. I, within the, uh, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, there was a sort of growing recognition and support for agroecology. There was also a major uh, World Bank study that had uh, also concluded, you know, that that agroecology and the move away from industrial agriculture practices was necessary. So you had gaining momentum for um, for the term and and for what it implied. And uh, there was really a deliberate effort, I'd say, by certain countries, notably the United States, but also by uh, uh, some of the largest fertilizer companies in the world, including Yara and some other corporations, to try to head this off. And, and they came up with the term climate smart agriculture, which means absolutely nothing. Um, but that became the, uh, the focus of, uh, of several international events. I've been used as the title. There was uh, then you know, effort to do all these reports about it without ever really stating what it was. Uh, and if you looked at it, it was really just dressing up um, the old Green Revolution model in uh, in new clothing. And the Green Revolution model basically depends on, you know, these <clears throat> seeds, uniform varieties of seeds that, are, that rely on uh, a huge amount of chemical fertilizers in order to produce yields. And they're also dependent on chemical pesticides. So that is, you know, the bread and butter of, uh, of agribusiness. And you point out the role of some of the world's largest fertilizer companies as key actors in uh, what you say is this deliberate attempt to ramp up agribusiness greenwashing. Yes, and they don't get enough attention. Uh, I think you know it's easy to, to point at uh, a lot of the oil companies or even some of the bigger food and ag companies, uh, but often the fertilizer companies are left out of that. and. Uh, uh, that's it's uh, unfortunate because they, uh, you know, a company like Yara is very active um, in in this in in the, all these efforts around greenwashing and all these different lobby groups that exist and the very just different coalitions that exist that are trying to give a space for industrial agriculture as a solution uh, to the climate crisis. Early on, Grain warned that the fertilizer industry's role in climate change was poorly understood and severely underestimated. I was quite struck by some statistics released uh, on this issue uh, by Grain back in 2015, which I'll quickly cite uh, some of those statistics. This is from an article titled The Exxons of Agriculture. Quote, we now can say that the use of chemical fertilizers this year will generate more greenhouse gas emissions than the total greenhouse gas emissions from all of the cars and trucks driven in the United States. We did some more recent calculations on that, looking at the specific numbers when it came to uh, production of nitrogen fertilizers and the emissions that come from the use of nitrogen fertilizers, which accounts for a large part of it. And we found that just nitrogen fertilizer alone accounts for one out of every 40 tons of greenhouse gas emissions uh, globally, annually. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it, it's a huge factor in the climate crisis. It takes a tremendous amount of energy uh, to produce these, these fertilizers. And, 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 you know, you can't really think of addressing or getting towards whatever they would, you know, to zero by 2050 uh, without, without a real change and a real transition away from chemical fertilizers.